Stanford, class 134, uh, introduction to fiction writing. Uh, my name is Josh. We've been kind of conversing online, uh, but I'm really glad to get a chance to actually talk directly to you a little bit. Uh, since we're dealing with narrative conflict and tension, I uh, thought I would just take a couple minutes and review some of the stuff that we've been talking about uh, this week. So to start with, uh, I think about narrative tension and narrative conflict as being two things that are a little bit different from each other. First, narrative tension, I think of as being kind of this pollution that's going to hang over the entire story. And that's going to represent the overarching kind of emotional crisis that's going on for our character. And we can sum it up like this. And this works in all stories, no matter what genre or mode that we're trying to talk in as we write. And that's simply this. This is the way my character wants the world to be, and this is the way the world actually is. Um, so if we want to use a few hard examples, it would be, you know, I want my husband back, but my husband moved across the country with another woman. Uh, I really want to be sober, but I don't really want to be sober, and how those two things butt up against each other generates the narrative conflict. So we have a good example this week with Anders and Bullet in the Brain, but go ahead and start to ask yourself some questions about your own character. Simply, if you were to look inside your character's mind and your character's heart, how does he or she want her world to be, ideally? And then, how does that butt up against what the reality of her world actually is? That's the tension. The idealized world versus kind of the cruel, hard world that she's experiencing on a daily basis. So start there and ask yourself some questions about your own protagonists from that vantage point. Secondly, to talk about narrative conflict itself, so now taking the information that you've accrued from this tension exercise, now start to put that on top of the story as a whole. Narrative conflict, as we talked about in the lecture this week, is going to be the forces... Well, let me rephrase that. Narrative conflict going forward is going to be, this is what my character wants, versus these are the forces... Uh, or obstacles you put in your character's path to either impede or to prevent her from accomplishing whatever her goals are. So the collision point then between those two things, that's dramatic action. So over here, again, um, what does your character want? We often hear it called, what's at stake for your character? And hopefully this is going to be both uh, an internal conflict and an external conflict. Say a good internal conflict might be um, somebody wants closure, somebody wants self-forgiveness, you know, etc. In an external conflict, we can take an, uh, an example from like a action or a genre movie. Say we have a character who finds a suitcase full of money. Well, obviously what they want to do is keep that suitcase full of money. There's not any uh, drama yet in that. That's just a motive. Oftentimes, I think we think solely about this side of the equation, focusing only on what our protagonist's goals are. And certainly, that's a really important thing to be thinking about. But at the same time, we also need to be thinking about what's going on over here. And here are the obstacles that we're going to put in his or her path. So to go with our example again, we find a suitcase full of money. We really want to keep it. So immediately one of the obstacles we're going to put in their path are that there are gangsters trying to chase the person down and get their money back. Uh, they're having a car chase, the gangsters are hot on the person's tail, and they're just about to run out of gas. Or they're diabetic and they need to, their blood sugar is getting altered and they need to stop and get something to eat, or whatever it might be. And then as those two things smash into each other, that's traumatic action. So again, this week, we're thinking about narrative tension. So in terms of your character, how do they want their world to be ideally versus how is it actually in their status quo? And then on a conflict level, be thinking about not only what does your character want in both an internal and an external sense, 
But what are the forces that you've put in their way, in their path, and how are those things colliding? And trust me, it's going to be the collision between those two opposing forces where the really juicy drama happens. You know, the example from Bullet in the Brain is something worth talking about too, as Wolf puts Anders in the midst of this hyperbolic, loaded bank robbery situation. From an external sense, it's very exciting. The stakes are mortal. Anders is in physical, you know, grave mortal danger. Yet at the same time, it's not just about a bank robbery. It's not just an external conflict. What makes literature so exciting is that it's the conflict that's going on inside the main character. It's Anders' internal angst that really drives that narrative engine. So this week, be thinking about your own conflicts, your own tensions on the page. What are you trying to convey to a reader? Uh, what sort of emotion are you hoping to elicit in this elusive stranger who happens to pick up your book and experience your pretty prose? And just to repeat myself for the umpteenth time as we've gotten started over these first two weeks, please, please, please uh, be having fun on the page. Uh, great writers are more often than not relaxed writers. Let yourself be free to be reckless on the page. Have a great time. Uh, I promise we're going to learn lots, but we're also going to have a lot of fun. Uh, it's easier to learn when you have a smile on your face. So happy writing this week, English 134. Uh, this will be the first video we post, and I'll do a couple more as our class rolls on. Happy writing.